Yeah. Uh-huh. 
Swami Mishnatad Paramahamsa Paribraj Prasada Shri Shimada's Divine Grace A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada Maharaj Ki Joy Om Vishnupad Paramahamsa Paribraj Shri Shimad Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Goswami Prabhupada Maharaj Ki Ananta Koti Vaishna Vrinda Ki Namacharya Shri Haridas Thako Ki Primskahu Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nichananda Shri Dvaita Gadadhara Shiva Sari Gaura Bhakti Vrinda Shri Shri Radha Krishna Gogokana Shamakun Radha Kund Giri Govadan Ki Shri Vrindavan Dham Ki Shri Mahaprabhu Shri Mahaprabhu Navadut Dham Ki Shri Jagannath Puri Dham Ki Nithai Gaura Premanandi O Gauris to the assembled devotees O Gauris to the assembled devotees O Gauris to the assembled devotees O Gauris to Shri Shri Guru and Gauranga O Gauris to Shri Prabhupada Jai Jai Shri Chaitanya Jai Nityananda Jai Gaita Chandra Jai Gaura Bhakta Vrinda Jai Jai Shri Chaitanya Jai Nityananda Jai Gaita Chandra Jai Gaura Bhakta Vrinda Jai Jai Shri Chaitanya Jai Nityananda Jai Dvaita Chandra Jai Gaura Bhakta Vrinda So continue reading from the Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita. We're up to Adi Leela chapter 13, which is the advent of Lord Chaitanya, which is very apropos, seeing we just had Gauravanim not that long ago. So we can continue on with text number 90. Is that correct? 90? Yeah. Okay. Sima Rashi Sima Lagna Ucha Graha Gana Sadbhaga Ashtabhaga Sava Sulakshana Okay, we'll do the word for word. Simha, Simha. the lion. lion. Rashi, Rashi. Sign, of the sign of the zodiac. Simha, Simha. The, lion. the lion. Lagna, Lagna. Birth, moment. birth moment. Ucha, Ucha. high. high. Graha Gana, all planets. planets. Satvarga, six area. Ashtavaga, eight area. area. Sava, all. all. Sulakshana, Sulakshana. auspiciousness. <laughs> Translation in purple by the divine grace AC Bhakti Vedanta Swami Prabhupada Shri Prabhupada Ki Jai. According to the Jyoti Veda or Vedic astronomy, when the figure of the lion appears both in the zodiac and the time of birth, Lagna, this indicates a very high conjunction of planets, an area under the influence of Sadbhaga and Ashtabhaga, which are all auspicious moments. Purport. The divisions of the Sadbhaga area are technically called Shetrahora Drikana. Nava, Nava Amsha, Dvada, Dvada Amsha, and Tri Shamsha. According to Joytea Vedic astrology, when it is calculated who rules the constellation of six areas, the auspicious moment is calculated. Srila Bhakti Sarandha Sarasvati Thakur, who was previously also a great astrologer, says that in the book named Bra, Brahaj, Brihaj Jataka, and the other books, there are directions for knowing the movements of stars and planets. One who knows the process of drawing a straight line and thus understands the area of Ashtabhaga can explain the auspicious constellations. The science is known especially by persons who are called Hora Shastravit, or those who know the scripture of the name Hora. On the strength of astrological calculations from the Hora scripture, Nilambara Chakrabati, the grandfather of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, ascertained the auspicious moment in which the Lord would appear. Uh, I think text number 91 is on the board as well. Yeah. Yeah, I'll, I'll read that one quickly, there's no pur purport to it. When the spotless moon of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu became visible, what would be the need for a moon full of black marks on its body? <coughs> so that's text number 1991. So, who's ever is on class tomorrow will read from text number 92. 
So let us proceed. Okay. So this uh, section of the Chaitanya Chaitramita is the advent of Lord Chaitanya. So it's looking at all the uh, different auspicious symptoms and signs that occurred when Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu appeared in the year 14... 86. <laughs> 1486. So this is looking at the uh, the last, these two verses, 89 and 90, are uh, looking at the, the birth chart that was uh, calculated by Nilambara Chakrabadi, who's the grandfather or the father of Jagannath, Jagannath Mishra, or Chaitanya's father. So uh, when uh, there's a very beautiful description of how Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu appeared in this world that very similar to how Lord Krishna appeared that we know that before Krishna's appearance it's explained in the Krishna book how he appeared within the mind and the heart first of Vasudeva and then was transferred to the heart and mind of uh, Devaki so similarly we find the same situation with Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu that uh, he uh, appeared within the heart and mind of Jagannath Mishra and then was transferred into the heart of uh, Sachimata. And the, the Acharyas explain that when they say the heart, they actually mean the womb. So when they say the word the heart of Sachimata means the womb of Sachimata, but there was no um, traditional means of birth that m us normal mortal beings have to go through to, to have children, that Lord Chaitanya and Krishna didn't appear that way. So their appearance is nothing to do with uh, the material realm. It's purely transcendental. And Lord Krishna and Lord Chaitanya, who, who are non-different, they'll only appear within the hearts of their pure devotees. So Vasudeva and Devaki and Jagannath Mishra and Sachimata, they're all pure Vaishnavas, Paramahamsa Vaishnavas. So Krishna comes under the control of, of such devotees. So uh, it's interesting that when he... Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu appeared that he actually spent 13 months in the womb of Sachimata. So they were all getting a bit concerned that now why isn't this child coming out? And uh, prior to Lord Chaitanya's birth, uh, that actually Sachimata and Jagannath Mishra had had eight daughters who, who uh, died at birth. And so they were very concerned. And then they w were praying uh, very fervently uh, to Lord Vishnu to please give us a child. And then bef that's when Vishwarup, Lord Chaitanya's brother, uh, appeared before Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, who's explained that he was Balaram. And uh, after this, this is when Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu appeared after waiting 13 months in the womb. So Lord Chaitanya's grandfather, Nilambar Chakrabadi, uh, had done this astrological uh, chart to find out when the birth time actually was. And uh, Bhakti Vinod Thakur, uh, in the previous verse, in chapter 80, uh, sorry, text 89, uh, Prabhupada elaborates actually on, on the birth chart and gives the birth chart calculated by Bhakti Vinod Thakur because we know that Prabhupada does talk a, a bit about astrology and his purports but as far as I know in all of his purports this is actually only uh, like astrological chart that's actually provided which is by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu so uh, there's some couple of pictures on there of uh, the yoga pit in Mayapur Dam. I'm sure most of you are familiar with yoga pit or have been there before. So uh, I was just there recently with uh, my family and Dr. Dan. So some nice pictures there for the yoga pit. And uh, that's the tree that Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu took birth under. I think from what I understand, it's a neem tree. And that's a tree is actually a cutting from the original tree that he appeared from. So it's an expansion of the original tree. And on that building to the to the right, for those who haven't been there before, is a nice little uh, temple with these deities of Mother Sachi and Jagannath Mishra with Lord Chaitanya on the lap. So, uh, yeah, nice, very, very important place. And this was discovered uh, by Bhakti Vinod Thakur, that before uh, this was discovered, uh, it was a disused area, farmland, and it's explained that there was a mound growing there with tulsi leaves growing on it, and people would stay away because they thought it was all haunted and would <laughs> hear noises and chanting, so everyone stayed away from it. So Bhakti Vinod Thakur suspected that was um, the birthplace, and from what I understand, his house, when you go across the Jalangi, uh, he could see this area and could see like a light that was emanating from it. So he suspected that was the actual birthplace of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, and he bought, uh, I think it was Jagannath Das Babaji Maharaj, who at the time was uh, very elderly, like he lived to over 100 years old, and he was so old and frail that he was carried around on a basket. 
So when they brought uh, Jagannath Das Babaji Maharaj to, to this uh, site, uh, he jumped out of this basket and uh, was written in ecstasy, like, Hari Bol, Hari Bol. So they took this as confirmation that this is the, the birthplace of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So uh, obviously been developed, Bhaktivinoda Thakur uh, and Bhakti Sanda Sarasvati developed um, a wonderful temple there, which has uh, deities in it. In fact, when they excavated uh, the temple there, uh, I'm not sure if it was this temple here or the, the main temple that they found a, like a Narayan Murti and they said that was actually the Murti that was worshipped by Jagannath Mishra. So that, that Murti is actually on the altar there, so you can have the Ashan of this with the other deities there. Um, there's also a, behind that there's a little temple to Lord Shiva with Shiva Lingams within it and there's, he's the uh, protector of the Dharm, Ashikra Pali, so you can go to this particular Shiva Lingams and pray to Lord Shiva to uh, reveal the nature of the Dharm to you because he's protecting it and keeps that all mundane so you can't actually see or appreciate the Dharm. There's also an interesting um, Shrikanath temple there as well when you go to the far end which is installed by Bhakti Nod Thakur and at first I didn't realise it was in Shringadev, I thought it was Varahadev because he looks like Varahadev, but apparently it's in Shringadev and there's a Gaur Gada, uh, Gaur Gada deity there as well, both installed by Bhakti Vinod Thakur. So, um, nice. I actually, well I remember, I've, don't, I've got some prashadam from there too, so don't let me forget to, if anyone wants some at the end of the class, so I'll get some special nectar from there, distribute the mercy. So, um, yeah, yoga bit, very transient, wonderful atmosphere there, very, very nice. <coughs> And so lots of wonderful pastimes took place there when Lord Jitani was a child, so many wonderful pastimes, but we won't get into those so much because we're more focused on the, um, the astrological chart of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, so we can go a bit further into that. Um, just a disclaimer, I'm certainly not an astrological expert, <laughs> but I know people who are. <laughs> so um, on their authority, I'm going to give some discussion about this uh, birth chart because it's quite interesting actually the um, details of the birth chart so some of this information I got from uh, devotees Patita Pavana Das and Abhay Mudra Dasi this is an article uh, they wrote specifically in the Dandavat magazine in, in 11th of March 2017 and it relates to these uh, verses we've been reading from, so it was quite pertinent to what we're discussing today as well. <clears throat> so uh, I'll read some of this information. <clears throat> I said I'm, I'm not an astrologer, so it's better to hear from people who know what they're talking about. So uh, Bhaktivinoda Thakur summarises the birth of Mahaprabhu with the following words. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was born in Mayapur in the town of Nadia just after sunset on the evening of the 23rd Falgun 1407 advent of Shakabda, which is 1486, uh, which is, equates to the 18th of February of the Christian era. The moon was eclipsed at the time of his birth and people of Nadia were then engaged as usual on such occasions in bathing in the Bhagirata with loud cheers of Hari Bol, Hari Bol. Also in the Ganga, as you know, that uh, eclipses are very inauspicious. So generally, the uh, Hindus and devotees will bathe in the, in the Ganga and chant while this inauspicious moment passes. So this was occurring while Chaitanya Mahaprabhu appeared. His father, Jagannath Mishra, was a poor Brahmin of the Vedic order, and his mother, Sachi Devi, was a was a good, chaste devotee wife. Both descended from Brahmin uh, culture, originally residing in Salhet. Mahaprabhu was a beautiful child and the ladies of the town came to see him with presents. His mother's father, Nilamba uh, Chakrabarti, a renowned astrologer, foretold that the child would be a great personage in time and therefore gave him the name Vishwamba. The ladies of the neighbourhood styled him Gorahari on account of his golden complexion and his mother called him Nimai on account of him being born under a neem tree. Beautiful as he was, everyone heartily, heartily loved to see him every day. So Lord Chaitanya, as we discussed, remained in the womb of such a matter for 13 months. Uh, and the Chaitanya Charitamrita, Chaitanya Charitamrita mentions that Nilamba Chakrabadi had correctly foretold an auspicious moment was approaching that the child would take advantage of. In a lecture from 1967, Srila Prabhupada announced that when the anticipated event arrived, Dilamba Chakrabadi ex examined the planets and declared, the, top, the child who has just appeared is God. 
So the Lord is known as Tri Yuga, meaning that he appears in Satya, Traita and Dwarapa Yugas. When the Lord does event himself in the special Kali Yuga, he comes as a covered incarnation. Because the golden avatar is very difficult to understand, Nilambar Chakravarti would have had to have been the most exalted of Vaishnavas, one of history's greatest astrologers to have understood his advent in advance. Since the Lord appears in Kali Yuga as a covered incarnation, therefore his horoscope must also have been covered. Only the greatest of pundits could see through that covering. Yes, yeah, so obviously, um, Wachichana's grandfather, Nilamba Chakrabadi, Jagannath Mishra's father, was a, a very advanced Vaishnava and a great astrologer as well. I think, didn't uh, Bhakti Sundar Sarasvati commented one time that this art of astrology has, there's no one really qualified anymore who can, who can do it correctly? And we know that um, before Chaitanya Mahaprabhu appeared that he sent all of his devotees in front of him so all these great devotees are all his eternal associates who appeared before him. Gora Ganadesh Dapika explains who they all are. <coughs> in fact, uh, from memory was um, Nilamba Chakrabadi was Lord Krishna's grandfather as well, I think, in Krishna Leela. What uh, Nilamba Chakrabi must have noticed in the chart of the Supreme Lord, among many other hidden elements, is that the Saturn, Jupiter and Mars all exert the unique aspects or drishti uh, vision upon the lagna uh, birth sign. Astrology is based upon the lagna, which is known variously as a atmastan, ascendant rising sign or first house. Aside from these planets, aspects to the house of Self, Sun and Rahu all, all also aspect the Lagna, while Ketu and Moon are positioned in the Lagna itself. Hence, seven of the nine planets place their full power upon the house of Self, indicating a personality that is a mix of innumerable elements. A study of Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita proves. At once stern and austere Saturn, he is also deeply compassionate Jupiter and exceedingly brave Mars. To his opponents, he was a lion, son, lord of Leo, aspects Leo rising. Yet he accept, accepted each person on his or own merit, not birth, even the so-called outcasts, Rahu. Above all else, he offered a quick and efficient means of liberation, Ketu, through Harinam and loving reciprocal service unto the Lord's lotus feet. He was most beautiful to behold, full moon ascendant. And of course, um, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu isn't, in, you know, he's not under the influence of mundane astrology, but if, his, if God is going to appear, then he's going to appear at the most auspicious time with the most auspicious influence of the planets. The Lord's Rashi was Simha, meaning the eclipsing full moon was in Leo. Since moon was in the rising sign at birth, which is why he always why we always wait for the full moon to rise in the east to break our fast in Gaurapani. We all do that, don't we? Yeah. <laughs> Hare Krishna. <laughs> Hare Krishna. The Lord's Lagna or Ascendant is also Leo. Ucha Graha Gana. Sri Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami notes that all the planets Grahas were elevated or exalted Ucha. The English concept of planet does not do justice to the more correct Vedic model of Graha, since planet merely implies a dead stone shorn of personality. Graha indicates a force field of specific energy and alludes to the individual personalities possessed by the various demigods as empowered parts and parcels of Sri Krishna. The planets, or rather the great demigods who control material nature, also have personalities. It is this mixture of personalities of the great Surya, Chandra, etc., as read in a horoscope, that yields clues to the personality of each Jataki, or individual who takes birth. By various planetary permutations, the king of Vaishnava poet, Krishna's Kaviraj, points out each of the planets becoming exalted in a hidden sort of way. Yeah, so you have to be very expert to kind of see through the veneer and go a bit deeper into it. So that is what a very quite qualified astrologer such as Nilambar Chakravarti could do. Regarding the Shadvagas, as mentioned here, Vedic astrology employs a system of understanding various hidden strengths of each of the planets according to their respective degrees. From each degree of the circle of the zodiac, various subtle effects of the planets are understood. From the subtle degree point, six modifying subdivisional charts, the Shadvatgas, are constructed for a more fine-tuned view. So you'll have to forgive all the technical language here. <laughs> Srila Prabhupada explains that according to, to the Brihat Jataka of Varaha 
Mihira, these Shad Vagas or subdivisional charts demonstrate the hidden portfolios of a horoscope. Srila Krishna's Kavaraj Goswami also mentions Ashtavaga or Ashtavaga, another system unique to the Vedic astrological science that serves as a means for measuring each planet's individual strengths and effectiveness and creating practical foreseeable results. <coughs> and it goes on. So in the purport we've just read, Prabhupada quotes his own Guru Maharaj, Bhakti Saranta Saraswati, who is not only the greatest spiritual force of the uh, greatest spiritual force of the force first half of the 20th century, but also the greatest astrologer. One of the six Shadvagas is the Drikana, or third division chart. It is said that through this chart, an astrologer can make a determination from where the native has appeared before his birth. The technique is to first determine which is stronger, the sun or moon, and then to determine in which Drekana that planet sits. If that planet is in the Drekana of Jupiter, then the native has come according to one opinion from the plane that is higher than Swaga, the heavenly realm. In the chart of Maprabhu, his moon, being full and aspected by the sun, Lord of Leo Ascendant, is stronger than the sun. His moon is, the, is in the Drekana of Jupiter with Jupiter and Ketu indicating his descent from a very high place. This is merely one significance of the volumes of meaning in the words Ucha Graha Gana. We can only marvel at the stupendous intellect of Srila Nilamba Chakrabarti, who could calculate in his mind thousands of fleeting moments before ascertaining in advance the destined appearance of Lord Sri Chanya Mahaprabhu. So a few other points. Hope you're all staying with me here. <laughs> the Parit Vatana Yoga between exalted Mars, the most powerful planet of Leo rising, and Saturn is another noteworthy feature. Parit, va Parit Pari Vartana means exchange, and it is caused by Mars in the house of Saturn, and Saturn is in the house of Mars. Mars is a yoga karaka, or Raja yoga planet, and thus he pulls Saturn into exaltation as well. This is a rare and most potent combination whose power is hard to describe. According to planetary Ashvatars, or planetary moods, four of Mahaprabhu's planets, Ketu, Saturn, Venus, and Mars, are in the mood of Nitya Lipsha, or desirous of dancing. Uh, there's also a rare Vina Yoga, the seven planets, excluding Rahu and Ketu, and seven signs, indicating expertise in all things, including singing and dancing. Uh, the dancing god. <laughs> and singing. Dancing, chanting, feasting. Another aspect of Mahaprabhu's chart is that Mercury, planet of communication, learning, literature, etc., is debilitated in the house of death, the eighth. Srila Prabhupada, who refused his college diploma, demonstrated that learning without Krishna consciousness is useless. And Mahaprabhu, after his meeting his spiritual master, went from the wrangling Nimai Pandit to an ecstatic Bhakta who was simply absorbed in calling upon the holy names of Lord Krishna, the Maha Mantra. It was a great shock to some of the pundits of Nabadweep who responded by ridiculing Lord Chaitanya's devotion until one by one they fell under his Sankatan spell. Furthermore, whereas his followers have produced tens of thousands of volumes of sacred literature, Sriman Mahaprabhu produced only eight shlokas, the Shikshastakam verses. Technically, in Mahaprabhu's chart, Mercury attains exaltation by the yoga called Nicha Bhanga, because Mercury is in an angle in a relationship to the house of to the house of Lord Jupiter. As an example to us, the Lord demonstrated that learning is useless, as seen by a debilitated or Nietzsche Mercury in the eighth. When it is not dovetailed into Krishna consciousness, and even one who is not learned by material standards must be considered the most intelligent and educated if he understands the science of devotional service. Hence, Nietzsche Bhanga Raja Yoga. Mm. It's interesting because it says that famous verse in the Bhagavatam that those who are endowed with sufficient, sufficient intelligence in Kali Yuga will worship Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So it's a special type of intelligence to understand spiritual subject matter, which is um, why uh, it says in the Bhagavad Gita, out of many thousands among men, a few may endeavor for perfection, and of those who have attained perfection, only one may know Krishna in truth. So it's actually very rare personalities who um, come to Krishna consciousness and understand the deeper subject matter. 
So we're at the mercy of these great exalted Vaishnavas like Nilambar Chakrabadi and the Acharyas and the Goswamis so we can understand and get access into these deeper truths of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu because he's the covered incarnation. So we can move on from here. Uh, so there's fur some further um, elaborations by another devotee about the astrological, uh, wonderful astrological alignments during the appearance of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Uh, that's actually period an, an original portrait done by or commissioned by Maharaj Patra of Peruja while Lord Chaitanya was residing in Jagannath Puri. So it gives you an indication of the, the uh, physical likeness of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So it's nice to uh, meditate on the actual appearance, what the Lord looked like when he was here. So that was one artist's interpretation of uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu while he was present in Jagannath Puri. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu spent 18 years in Jagannath Puri, residing there. Uh, six of those years he was very public, doing Sankirtan and engaging with Rathayatra festivals. And at 12 years he was very deep in uh, the mood of Gambira in the room. Uh, very, Gambira means very deep, so he was very deeply absorbed in this mood and feeling of uh, separation, uh, which is why he came for, so he could experience this mood of love that Radharani feels for Lord Krishna. So Krishna came as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, so he could actually experience that feeling of, of Radharani. So when you go uh, to uh, Jagannath Puri, you can still see this uh, uh, Gumbera room, and there's some of Lord Chaitanya's personal artifacts there as well. There's the uh, Paduka and Kamandalu, the water pot that was um, used by Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. When we, we were in Navadweep, we went to uh, Dameshwar Mahaprabhu. Yeah, yeah, sure. We went to. Um, you can get it on the internet. It is, it is on the internet. Uh, Dameshwar Mahaprabhu, uh, and this uh, particular deity of Lord Chaitanya was worshipped by Vishnu Priya. So when Lord Chaitanya took sannyas, he was uh, 24 years old, and I think he, she was only 16 at the time. So uh, in order to alleviate her feelings of separation. Uh, because she's a goddess of fortune, uh, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu uh, gave her this wonderful deity, Dameshwar Mahaprabhu, and a uh, very beautiful deity actually, and he stands there with his arms up open indicating that I am yours. So uh, Vishnu Priya worshipped this uh, particular form of Mahaprabhu for 80 years. 80 years she worshipped this deity. So she was 96 when she passed away, and she did very intimate uh, service to Dameshwar Mahaprabhu. And um, this explained that there's a pair of uh, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's padukas also um, in this, or a pair of his shoes that uh, also in this temple. So I asked the Pajari if we could have darshan of them. So he went one step further and called us around to the side and then put these padukas on our heads. So they're very, very ecstatic. <laughs> so in some of these places, there's lots of um, the personal artifacts of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu still present, which makes it very personal that God is a person. So he has personal artifacts. He has a water pot. He has shoes and these things. So. It helps you understand and appreciate that um, the supreme person, the ultimate source, is personal, not impersonal. Uh, so we'll continue on here. Uh, so th these are some other points that were elaborated on by, I don't know if I caught the name of the devotee who did this. It was from yeah. This could, this could be an elaboration from the devotee um, who did that chart on the previous slide. The same devotee did that. Bichidara, Bichidara Das, I think his name is. <clears throat> so alignment of the of a triple axis axis. First of all, you see that Ketu and Rahu are in the first and seventh house. We can go back to that if people who want to. Can we go back? We can go back. We can go back? Yeah, we can go back. Are they houses? Yeah, those are the 12 houses there. Like, uh, 12 houses. Yeah, there's 12 houses there, and those planets are aspecting each of those 12 houses. So the um, astrologer is commenting or giving a purport to the meaning of where those particular planets are situated in those different 12 houses. 
Yeah, so I'm not an astrological expert. I have a very, very basic layman's understanding of it, but um, you can. There's devotees here like um, W. Purush can go further into explaining the houses and their meaning and their aspects and so forth. First of all, you can see the Ketu and Rahu in the first and seventh house, thus the strongest axis of planets, the northern and southern lunar nodes, has aligned with the strongest axis of the sky, the eastern and western horizons. In fact, the Rahu Ketu axis was at 26 degrees, of which would exactly be the position of the eastern and western horizon at sunset. So the conjunction of the two axes is exact and could not be stronger. On top of this, Mahaprabhu, was born on a full moon. In fact, his birthday was celebrated by those who still follow his example around the world, just as yesterday in the modern age. If you're born on a full moon and born when the sun sets, this means that you were born with the moon rising. Therefore, we add a third axis to the alignment in Mahaprabhu's chart, a beneficial axis of the sun and moon at their fullness. Mahaprabhu is therefore not thought of as a human being, but as an incarnation of Sri Krishna, the divine male, absorbed in the attitude of Sri Radha, the divine female. The astrological soundness of this conception of Mahaprabhu is verified by the tight conjunction of these, of these three axes. <clears throat> so all three of these conditions, uh, the three axes, verifies the idea that there is complete conjunctional unity between the physical, emotional and spiritual beings of Sri Chaitanya. In other words, there is no distinction or duality between his body, mind and soul. In other words, all of these aspects are superconsciousness, aka divine. So we know that Lord Chaitanya he had a spiritual body, he didn't have a material body, so there's no difference between uh, the body and, and the mind, whereas with us, we differentiate between the material body and the consciousness of soul within the body, whereas in the spiritual platform, that, that duality doesn't exist at all, it's absolute. <clears throat> and the spiritual energy is made of satchid and ananda, eternally bliss and knowledge, that's what the spiritual form is made of, so that's what Lord Chaitanya's body is compiled, com comprised of, uh, satchid and ananda. Ishvara Parama Krishna Satchitananda Vigraha Anande Adagovinda Savakarana Karanam, as explained in the introduction to the Brahma Samhita. Divine, this is point number two, divine male and female combined. This triplicate axis alignment has an additional trademark. It occurs with its head in Leo. The moon, archetype of femininity, sits in Leo, archetype of masculinity, on the ascendant and this is huge and momentous alignment. This supports the idea that Mahaprabhu is a dual incarnation of the divine masculine and feminine beings, Krishna and Radharani. So we understand that Lord Chaitanya is a combination of Radharani and Krishna. Though there is no difference, there is no difference between Lord Chaitanya and Lord Krishna, um, except Lord Chaitanya has come in the mood of Srimata Radharani. So this is indicated also within this astrological chart as well that he's combined of the divine masculine and feminine, Krishna and Radha. Number three, eclipse. If you align the solar lunar axis with the Rahu Ketu axis, you have an eclipse. Mahaprabhu was born while the ri rising moon was being eclipsed by Ketu. The eclipse heralds in momentous change and radical transformations. This is why it was so deadly feared by traditional cultures, such as uh, ancient Indian culture. Mahaprabhu was inconceivably radical and would forever and unalterably change the history of spiritual India and the world, because it is primarily as a result of him and those who followed him that India's wealth of knowledge exploded into the world in the late 60s via Srila Prabhupada, both transforming India and the world. The full impact of the radicalness of Sri Chaitanya is, in this author's opinion, still yet to come. In the coming years, we'll see the dawning of a new age tied to Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. It's actually interesting, when I was in uh, Vrindavan, uh, a devotee, um, maybe Ram Das, I think it was, a Prabhupada disciple, was giving a class there, and he made a comment, which I hadn't heard before, but he was saying that all of the different uh, Sampradayas eventually uh, will come under the banner of worship in Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So maybe not all the Sampradayas of the different Vaishnava uh, Sampradayas necessarily accept Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu as being Krishna, but he said that he had some reference from where this will come, that all the different Sampradayas in due course will all come under the banner of worshipping uh, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And I was reading in the Chaitanya Charitamrita how it's explained that 
let Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu through his chanting in Navadweet would eventually spread through the whole universe. And uh, Prabhupada explains that, well, one may question that if Lord Chaitanya was only chanting Sankirtan in Navadweet, then how could it spread through the, whole, through the whole universe? And he explains that that Krishna, just as Krishna is the cause of everything, he sets everything in motion with the material cosmos and material creation. And similarly, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu set in motion the Sankirtan movement, which will gradually spread uh, through, through the whole earth, planet we're on, which we're witnessing and then eventually it will spread through the whole universe. So we're dealing, dealing with an interplanetary Sangatan movement. So Lord, the glories of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu aren't just known on this planet, but also will spread through the different planetary systems in this universe as well, which is quite fascinating. <coughs> so another point, aspects to the ascendant. Mahaprabhu's first house receives the aspect of Jupiter. Mars and Saturn, the three outer planets of Vedic astrology. This combination indicates a spiritual leader. Jupiter and Saturn combine to produce leaders. When Mars adds to this aspect as a lord of the ninth house of religion, he increases it. In this case, Mars is exalted and is exchanging signs with the great factor of spiritual truth, Saturn. Therefore, his influence is very strongly spiritual. Mahaprabhu's spirituality was a spirituality of divine passion, compassion. So another point, uh, divine compassion. In the ninth house of this chart, you find Venus, who occupies her own sign of Taurus in connection with Rahu and Mahaprabhu's Navamsha. Venus is in Mars, Aries, and that Aries is in the ninth house of the chart, the house of religion. When Venus and Mars combine, we have Eros. The combination in the ninth house indicates another truly radical facet of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. His ability to reveal the pinnacle of religion as a divine play of bliss between the infinite masculine being Sri Krishna and the infinite feminine being Sri Radha. This Venus is aspected by Jupiter from Sagittarius. Jupiter controls human reproduction and is also the planet of morality. Only the greatest and most fortunate of human minds can even comprehend the supreme purity of this simultaneous uh, purity and division of the spirituality which Mahaprabhu envisioned and was consumed by. So we know that uh, there's that nice verse uh, in the Chaitanya Chaitramrita that we offer our respects to Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu who's the most magnanimous incarnation because he's freely distributing uh, that which no other incarnation has ever done before. So this is the gift of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu that he's freely distributing the topmost form of love of Godhead and that mood of separation, that Vipralamba Seva, which is the mood that Radharani and the Kalva girls feel towards Lord Krishna. So Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is, is freely distributing this um, without discernment to anybody. So this is the magnanimity of, of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, that he's freely giving this uh, love of Godhead without discrimination according to birth, caste or any of these things. So he is the most magnanimous incarnation. So the next point this devotee makes is the mood of love of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, the insanity of love. <laughs> Mahaprabhu has Mercury debilitated in the 8th house and in the 12th house of his Navamsha. He could not communicate his feelings purely to everybody. He would become mute and choked up. He could only cry out the names of the beloved Krishna while absorbed in the maddening intensity of Sri Radha's love for him. When he found a person who understood him, he would feel such relief. So Ramananda Roy and Sarup Damodar were very, very intimate associates of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu when he was residing in Gambaria for the last 12 years of his time in Jagannath Puri. So uh, they were able to um, understand his mood and would recite various uh, verses from the, the Shastras to invoke this intense mood that Lord Chaitanya was feeling of separation towards Lord Krishna. So uh, he only had very specific, specific devotees that he would very intimately associate with. Uh, so he would experience his higher moods of um, rasa. So these are very intimate devotees. Uh, Sarup Damodar's house is still there. So you can still visit Sarup Damodar's house in Jagannath Puri when you visit there as well. So another point that this devotee makes is the influence of uh, the dashas. Mahaprabhu was born in the Dash of Venus, while Rahu was the sub-cycle Lord. This highlights the importance of these two planets in his chart. 
that illustrates that his philosophy of divine love would be the prime theme of his life, which would be one of radical changes and constant upheaval with tremendous effect on the general public. He took sannyas at the age of 24. In other words, he completely gave up his normal life and dedicated himself fully and completely to pursuing his religious and spiritual aims when he was only 24 years old. This was during his moon cycle when Venus was a sub-lord. If you, if you have some astrological understanding, you'll get some chills reading that. Consider how important this ninth, ninth house Venus is to Mahaprabhu's life by considering the timing of these events. So having taken sannyasi, he endured much hardship in the pursuit of solitary renunciation. Thus he entered the Dasha cycle of Mars, who sits exalted in the sixth house of hardship and work. As expected, he had passion for the rigours of yoga discipline. Not yoga in the Hatha yoga sense, but yoga in the sense of bhakti yoga. This is quite befitting a sannyasa renunciate, and thus Mahaprabhu is famous as being a celibate renounced sannyasi of the highest and purest type. Following this, Mahaprabhu entered a period of extreme upheaval as his Rahu period began at the age of 32. At first he became extremely influential in society, with Rahu in the seventh house, bringing his understanding of divinity to thousands and thousands of people wherever he went through the Sankirtan movement. But around the time Mercury and Ketu and Venus had their sub-cycles, Mahaprabhu retreated into solitude and Puri. He disappeared at the age of 48. This was during his Rahu moon cycle. Additionally, you can notice that after being born in Venus at the age of 10, his lifestyle and interest shifted, and from there on out, he is influenced one after another by the cycle of planet which occupies or aspects his first house. This can be considered as a significant contributing factor to great personalities. And then it makes another point about the philosophical contribution of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Uh, Mahaprabhu's school of thought is known as a chincha beta beta tattva and a conceivable simultaneous oneness and difference. The configuration of the three axis, ascendant, descendant, Rahu, Ketu and Solar Luna portrays a person who understands polarity and duality coming into alignment and oneness. Mahaprabhu is thought to have completed a series of events which began with Gautama Buddha. Buddha stopped the abuse of the Vedic scriptures by throwing it out entirely and declared all to be nothing with Shunyavad or um, Nirvana philosophy. After Buddha came, Shankaracharya reinstated the Vedas by saying that all was actually something, but, some, but that something was one com completely unified, a completely unified entity, very much akin to nothing or Nirva Shesha Shunyavadi, but a step removed, technically called Advaita Vada. After Shankara came, Ramanuja, who said that the something of divinity indicated by the Veda was indeed a unified entity. But this was, but that, this unification was not a formless mass akin to nothing, but was instead a unified person with personal attributes and the ability to express and experience. Technically, this philosophy of Ramanuja is called Vashishta Advaita Vada. After Ramanuja came, Madhava appeared, who took the philosophical development a step further by stating that there were actually two multiple distinct beings in the enlightened condition, the object of love and the subject of love. This philosophy is typically known as the way to Vata. So when you see pictures of Madhava Charis going like that, meaning there are two. Mahaprabhu completed the chain by integrating all the former teachings into one and thus restoring the original understanding of the Vedanta which was lost when Buddha had to dismantle it due to corruption. Mahaprabhu's teaching in this regard is the ultimate state of spiritual existence. There are in fact many spiritual beings who can be subjects and objects of love and thus exchange bliss with one another. But he added that these subjects and objects have along with their eternal distinction from one another an eternal oneness and sameness. It is this sameness which makes a depth of love, praying, espoused by Mahaprabhu so profound and fundamental to the spiritual nature of our very being. So no, we can stop there. <laughs> it can go on further. But it's very fascinating when you look at these uh, birth charts of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And obviously the last two texts, 89 and 90, have given us an opportunity to elaborate even further on those. So I hope we got something out of that. Or we'll stayed awake. I don't know if anyone has any points they want to make before we finish. Well, we can take some prasadam if everyone wants some prasadam. Yes. Yeah, let's do prasadam. Let's do prasadam. <laughs> yeah, well, come and grab some. Come and grab the nectar. 
Jai Shri Chaitanya Charitamrita Ki Jai Shri Krishna Skavraj Goswami Ki Jai <laughs>